check your M, V, N, W, N, N, actions over words, set your alarm, master your emotions, critical response, and finally, to divulge or not divulge. These are the six steps I'm going to walk you through today and teach you how to keep yourself from getting devoured by ghosters, by toxic people, love avoidance, uh, narcissists, or just anyone that operates text message a little bit differently than you do. These are just good, solid, healthy boundaries when it comes to texting. So let me break this all down for you. Let's start with check your M V N W N N. What that stands for is your morals, values, needs, wants, negotiables, and non-negotiables. Okay. I'm going to actually, as I go through this, I had a recent situation and that's what spawned this video. And so I'm going to use that story to illustrate the point. So first of all, I have to give you a little bit of my history. My mother was an alcoholic and for four to six weeks, she would treat me like gold. It was wonderful. But then she'd be in a walking coma for seven to 10 days. I suffered repeated, horrific abandonment for years. And then my father was very emotionally distant. And so I became the dumping ground for everybody. I was never allowed my needs and wants. I was always taking care of other people. So this setup is that I'm going to explain to you is because of my trauma history. Now, yours may be different, but that's why we need to know what our morals and values are, our needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. We have to do the recovery work to discover how did my trauma create this reaction in me that when people ghost me or, or they act differently through text message, why do I get triggered? Well, it's pretty obvious why I'd get triggered if somebody ghosts me or um, their text messages aren't in line with what I want. So I have some very strict morals and values and negotiables and non-negotiables when it comes to communication. The first is I ignore everybody's words. I watch their actions. Actions are everything. It's the only way because my childhood words didn't mean anything. My mom would say, would you give me a hug the next time I want to drink and I won't drink. Words mean nothing to me. She'd still drink. I need to see actions. And so when I start to see actions or somebody uses words, but their actions don't follow it, that's a massive red flag for me. Okay. So that's the first thing that I have a very strong moral and value on. And so when their actions don't align with their words, that is non-negotiable. Now there's another piece to this is that when it comes to text message, respond time and the response length matters to me, okay? Because of all the work I've done emotionally, I'm, as you know, I just share my life story. I'm very comfortable with being vulnerable. Well, most people aren't. <laughs> like most people haven't done this level of recovery work. So I'm very aware that my level of comfort isn't normal and most people can't match that. Well, that's okay. I've learned through recovery to allow for a certain amount of grace for their shorter responses, because my responses are very detailed. Like I know, you know, someone asks a question and it's, a, I have a lot to say because I've investigated so much where most people haven't done that investigation. So their responses are very short or they're very guarded, narcissistic, all these different things. So I have a level of response I'm okay with, but if it gets too short, that's a trigger for me. Also, the response time. It's my moral and value that if I'm available, I respond. Well, that's rare in today's world. Nobody has that account, personal account. Personal accountability is another huge moral and value of mine. Most people have virtually no personal accountability. Again, they, that's not to disparage them. That's a recovery aspect. So I have a level of grace that I can go to, but once it hits a certain point, it brings up all my childhood stuff. Now that's reasonable and normal. We will never recover all of our, from all of our trauma. And so we have to learn, you know, constantly learn to grow and try and stretch that out, but we have to know where we are currently. Okay. So 
<clears throat> in this particular instance, we had been trading pretty regular messages for a couple of days. My responses were always longer. I would have more responses and my response time was faster. But the length of response I was getting back was adequate. It wasn't nearly as deep as mine and the response time was slower, um, but it was in my tolerances. I could survive it. I was still boundaried and contained. Well, this person said they would get back to me, they had a busy day, and they would get back to me that night with full explanations of all these threads we had started. And we had talked about making plans to get coffee and they said they'd check their schedule and let me know that night. So two actions. I'm gonna answer all of this stuff and I'm going to tell you what my schedule is so we can get coffee, all right? None of that happened. I never heard from them the rest of the day. Those are two big things in a short period of time, all right? Now, I didn't make a stink about it. I was prepared for it. I kind of figured, you know, this is what most people do, the lack of accountability. Like, I'm just different in the way I approach things. And they get to approach life the way they want. So the next morning, they said hello and said, I have a lot of time today. I'm gonna to respond to everything. Well, they never did. That's three in a very short time. And the responses were slow. And the time in between responses was very slow. Like I responded back to that and it was another five hours before I heard from them again. Boom. Now I'm in danger zone for me. Three, you know, three statements that weren't followed up by action in less than 24 hours. I, that, that goes against my morals and values. It is non-negotiable. All right, I can't have that in my life. So I start to back off and I'm gonna teach you that process of how to do this, all right? <clears throat> so I, the next step, that's why actions over words. So as I, said, as I said, when there are two or more, at least for me, and this is what you have to find out for you, maybe it's 10, maybe your childhood wasn't like mine and you can handle people not following up on their words 10, 20, 30 times. Maybe you just don't care. Like everyone's different. Everyone's childhood trauma is different. Some people, this is like, what? Three times? Who cares? Why are you being so picky? Again, it has to do with my trauma history. Yours is different. And that's why you need to know what your morals and values are, what your negotiables and non-negotiables are. All right. If you don't know that, that's why you're getting sucked into these dynamics because eventually you're giving and giving and giving and now you've gone too far. Now you're depleted. Now you have no boundaries and they own you. And now they're manipulating, controlling you, everything. You've lost yourself. That's called giving yourself away, thinking if I just you know, talk more and chase them more because it was so good, they'll come back. They won't, all right? Their actions just showed they won't come back. Honor their actions. That's a non-negotiable. Always watch their actions. All right, so for you in this dynamic, you're gonna, when it comes to actions over words, you're gonna have to figure out what's your moral and value, negotiable and non-negotiable amount around the amount of times that their actions don't match their words. Also, you're gonna have to figure out what are you okay with in response length and the time in between responses, all right? What is okay for you that keeps you contained and boundaried? All right, it's not gonna be like mine. It's you have to do that recovery work and discovery work to figure that out yourself. All right, so now that all of this has happened, we move to step number three, set your alarm. Okay, remember I said that I got this morning message that said, I have the time, I'm gonna tell you everything. And then nothing didn't place one heart over a message, gave a short response to one thing, but there were, we had like 20 threads growing, going. There's tons of stuff we talked about that's never been responded to by this person, okay? <clears throat> and so I just sat there and waited. And it was nearly five hours, and, and it was four hours and 42 minutes before I got another response. And it was just, hey, how's your, 
Saturday, a little bit more, or your Sunday, how a little bit more about um, how they've changed as a person. Very short, but no detail, still no response to anything. All right? So, this is how you keep yourself contained. I recognize this person's actions don't match their words. Their response time and everything, that's a huge red, red flag for me. So I set an alarm. I will not respond for four hours and 42 minutes. And so I just calculated the time, put on my phone, like I, doesn't matter. I don't care how many times they text me, I will not respond for four hours and 42 minutes. I will match, this is called matching. This is what keeps us boundaried, all right? We match their response time. We don't try and manipulate or say something or bring it up. They get to live their life the way they want. This is about our recovery and dealing with ourselves, all right? So no matter what, I will not break that boundary of four hours and 42 minutes, all right? That's how I keep myself contained. That moves us in to master your emotions. And this, to me, is the most exciting part. You see, the reason we're triggered has absolutely nothing to do with them. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just doing what works for them. And they get to live based on their trauma history and whatever. This is about me. I'm the one who's freaking out. This person wasn't my mother who was an alcoholic and abandoned me. This person wasn't my father. And so what people don't realize is <clears throat> every emotional re reaction we have as an adult was learned in childhood. So you're just, no matter what somebody does, your reaction is based on the summary, the category, and the definition that you created based on your parenting that you received and the culture and society you were raised in, okay? So my, because of my parenting and culture and society, I recognize that my fear and all the abandonment and everything that comes up over somebody's actions not aligning, aligning with their words and um, their inability to match my vulnerability and all of that, do you hear how that's just like my parents? So I am projecting my parents' face onto this person. Well, that's not their responsibility. Well, I get excited. And this is, this is what we have to do. Remember, emotions, we are not born with them. They are learned. We create a summary of the event that happened. We place it into category and we define it. So my summary was, I'm abandoned. My thoughts, feelings don't matter. I will, I am always neglected, as my dad said just before he died, Kenny, you got the least of all the kids. And so there's the definition I got. If you don't speak to me, if you don't, if you don't, if your actions don't align with your words, if your responses are not the same length as mine, they're not equal. Remember, I got less. That, so the definition is I got less. <clears throat> so if your effort doesn't match mine, if it's not equal, and your response time doesn't match mine, I freak out. Now, I've done a lot of recovery, I've gotten better, but I recognize in that moment, this person is acting just like what appears to me as my parents. So I recognize it's not about them, but see, I've done the recovery work of, and now I know my reaction to this person's behavior isn't about them, it's about my childhood. And so now we have to master our emotions. We have to create new summaries, new categories, and new definitions of when somebody ghosts us, um, their actions don't align with their words, and um, they're not as vulnerable as we are, all right? So the first thing I did was I took my, I did what are called the three gets, the three gets of Al-Anon. Get off their back, get out of their way, get on with your own life. What that get off their back means Quit shrinking them. Quit sitting there. Oh my God. You know, I mean, I did four hours and 42 minutes, but, but that was so I knew how to respond. But I didn't spend the last several hours ruminating on them, getting angry, hurt. I didn't, I, I got off their back. They get to live life and pursue texting any way they want. It's none of my business. So that's get off their back, get out of their way. That means don't control their life. They get to live their life there. They get to have their own summaries, categories, and definitions. Like maybe for this person, my style of texting of responding right away feels incredibly suffocating and smothering based on their childhood. So they need distance. So they're just protecting themselves from me. 
They don't see what I'm doing as accountable or healthy. They see me as toxic. It's quite possible, all right? So instead of projecting onto them that my way is better and right, I get out of their way. They get to live the life they want. And then number three, I get on with my own life. And that's what I did. I laid by the pool, I went for a walk. And when I was out for the walk, I went, oh my God, I should do a video on this. This is amazing. So do you see, I'm creating a new summary. I'm taking a situation and instead of borrowing from the past, those old summaries, categories, and definitions, I'm going, wait a minute, this is a gift when somebody does this. Look at how I get to step into my own life. I get to create a new video. I've been making playlists. Like I've had an amazing day with me. Remember what the third get is? Get on with your own life. That's what I did. Clean the whole house. The place looks spectacular. Like I've just had a fantastic day. I mean, the other thing is, look, I don't, I don't have to be controlled by anyone. I don't have to respond. I get to do whatever I want. I have total freedom. Like there's so many benefits to somebody who reacts this way when I choose not to control them. So do you see I'm creating new categories and definitions around all of this? Now, I am staying with my morals and values. I'm not changing and going, well, I'll just become what they want. I'm not giving myself away, but I am changing that internal feeling that sends us through the roof that makes us susceptible to the narcissist and susceptible to the love avoidant and all the toxic people because we just because we get our abandonment gets triggered we keep going we don't know how to stop and this is how we learn to stop all of this is we learn emotional mastery all right we create new categories and definitions and that's how i spent my day now let's move to step five the critical response what do you do when the ghoster, the narcissist, the love avoidant, or just somebody who has a different texting style than you finally responds, all right? Well, for me, because now I recognize this person doesn't have the same morals and values that I have around uh, actions um, aligning with words. That's a non-negotiable. Like I don't, I can't sustain somebody's that many actions not lining up in such a short period of time. In my life history, that means that will just get bigger. It won't, it's not just random and you know barely happened, all right? This person made a conscious choice not to do what they said. I don't ignore that, all right? So, <clears throat> What you do in this moment is everything. This is where you get your power back, your containment back. This is where you do a massive emotional shift and create a new category and definition and response. This is really the meat of turning your life around and being able to handle these things and not get destroyed by these type of people, all right? So you what you do to retain your safety and get your containment back is match them. Match how superficial they are, all right? Match their ghosting. That's why I set the alarm, four hours and 42 minutes. I'm not gonna respond, no matter what. Now, they had three things in there. One part was a little vulnerable, somewhat, you know, about you know some changes they've made in their life. The other one was, how's your day? And I can't remember the third, very superficial. So. Remember, they're not responding. They said they'd respond to all the stuff we had started talking about, but they didn't. So I match it, all right? Also, because their morals and values are different around vulnerability, I'm not gonna be vulnerable. I'm not gonna talk, I'm not even gonna touch this piece where they got vulnerable about themselves. No way. I will not be your support when you haven't been mine. That's my moral and value. It's non-negotiable. I need things fair. Remember, my dad said I got the least of all. So because of my trauma history, I have to keep it that way. So I'm ignore, I will ignore the um, vulnerability. I will ignore the, the, the superficial question. And I will only attach to the how's your day going. And my response will be awesome. That's it. Or actually, I think it'll be amazing. It's been an amazing day. Look at what I've created. Look at the opportunity this person has given me to heal and recover. Like, could there not have been a better day? Like, 
I'm so thankful they didn't respond. Like I'm getting so much more from their lack of response and, and being vulnerable than had they, you know, their actions matched their words. Now it's quite possible. They're scared. There's, you know, a lot of reasons. Maybe this isn't their normal behavior, but when I see it, I don't ignore it. And so my response is going to be, that's it. I'm going to be boundaryed up. I'm going to match them. And so I will just have one word response. Amazing. And I will ignore the other two. That's it. All right. That gives us our containment back because we've been vulnerable. You know, if you're someone like me, more on the love addict side, but also someone who's done a lot of recovery work and it's easy for you to do this you do feel depleted. You feel abandoned, neglected, invisible, ignored, um, disrespected, taken advantage of. Well, no one disrespects us or takes advantage of us unless we allow it. Well, I'm going to stop that. All right. I've now seen three actions that don't align. I'm ending that disrespect because you can't disrespect me unless I let you. And so I, I was vulnerable to a level that worked for me. As soon as I saw the red flags, Last night and today, I'm acting on it. I am not going to give myself away. I will not allow myself to be disrespected, treated invisibly, ignored, neglected. No. A narcissist can't get us unless we give ourselves to him. Same thing with a love avoidant, anyone toxic. We are always responsible. And if you've been in these situations, you got sucked in because you look, no one taught you about any of this. You didn't know. You did the best you could, but you are responsible. So if you're still listening to this, you need to do the work. That's all there is to it so that you can get to a place where this never happens again. You cannot place the blame on them. It's our inability to have boundaries and take care of ourselves that allowed the narcissist to abuse us. We have to own that. All right. Now, whether this person is a narcissist or love avoid, none of that matters. What matters is what I can control, me. I will not give myself away and go against my morals and values, my needs and wants, my negotiables and non-negotiables. So my response will simply be amazing. That's it. They have to earn my vulnerability through their actions, not their words. If their actions get different, I might open up a little bit more, but I'm going to be very hesitant from this point forward until I see consistent actions that show that maybe this was an anomaly. Unless that happens, that's all they're going to get from me. I will not allow myself to be mistreated. And so, well, see, I've created my own category and definition of what mistreatment is. Theirs is different, obviously. And so someone listening to this might go, God, this guy's crazy. He's so nitpicky. Well, good for you. You just have a different category and definition based on your trauma history. Honor it. Whatever it is, honor it. That's all I'm trying to get across it. But you need to know what yours are to be able to honor it. All right? Now we get to the last piece, to divulge or not divulge. Because they're going to notice a difference. They're going to be like, hey, what's up? At some point. Or they will do one of two things. They'll just drift away because they're not sucking the life out of you. Um, they'll get in their own head and make things up that they're being rejected. And so, like, you know, there's possibilities. If they disappear, it's, it's not about you. It's what they did inside themselves because they don't know about this. They're projecting back onto you. And so because they don't have the recovery, they're going to disappear. All right. Some it may trigger their abandonment issues because we've all been abandoned in some way in childhood. And so they may go, hey, I've noticed a difference. What's going on? Now, this is, a, this is kind of gray. If it's somebody new that you don't really know, that's a tough one as far as you how much you divulge about what process you're using and how you're going about this. Now, I'm going to talk about my situation. I've known this person for many years. Um, and um, so if they were to ask me, I'm not going to give them all the details because the actions don't warrant that level of vulnerability. Remember, they didn't follow up on their actions, but also they're not equaling my vulnerability or my response time. And so I'm not, 
I, I'm going to match their distancing. I won't be my normal. What's very comfortable for me is just to say everything. That's just comfortable for me. But I know when I do that and don't get it back because of the fairness piece from my childhood, I freak out. And so I'm going to protect myself. And so my response to this person, because they know a little bit about recovery, would be something along these lines. I would say, um, you know, in, in your personal work, did you ever learn about boundaries and matching? And most likely they haven't. And so I would probably, instead of a text message, I would use the voice thing because it's too complicated to put in a text message and too much can get misunderstood. And so I would probably say something like, well, um, there's a concept called boundaries and matching. And before I get into this, I want to let you know that what I'm about to share has nothing to do with you. What you're doing is fine. I'm just giving you an insight into how I work. This is my process. Okay. And so what I've noticed is, you know, when it comes to boundaries and matching is it starts with what our morals and values are and needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. And so for me, my morals and values are, it's critically important that somebody's words match or somebody's actions match their words. Well, I observed um, three times um, over the span of less than 24 hours where your actions didn't match your words. Once you said you were going to, you know, at the end of the day, you were going to answer, you know, respond to all of the uh, topics we had going. Plus you were going to get, you were going to tell me your schedule for us to get coffee. Neither of those things happened. And I didn't get a text saying, Hey, life got busy. I didn't forget you. I, it was just ignored. That for me may not be yours, but, but the lack of information as to why that information let, that you're, you were unable to follow through on your promise that goes against my morals and values. And for me, that's non-negotiable. And then the next morning, I recall you saying that you had the day, and so you were going to respond to all of it. My recollection is you responded to one piece very shortly, but nothing else. And so for me, in a very short period of time, three um, instances where I heard you make commitments to me, they weren't followed through on. And so because of my history and what goes inside of me, um, I've learned that I have to match somebody's um, system of communicating. So what I hear that works for you is your action. It's okay for you that your actions don't match your words um, and that, you know, your length of response and time to responding is different than mine. And so I won't get into the details as to why mine need to be different. Maybe if we were to ever develop a level of um what for me would be equal intimacy and vulnerability, I would share that detail, but we don't have that right now. And so what I will say is I have to do what works best for me to stay contained because of my history so that I don't put that on you. And so that's why, um, you know, my response was the exact time it took you to respond to me. And I just stayed to the very superficial topics that you've been staying to. So again, you don't need to change. You're not doing anything wrong. I want you to do whatever works best for you. I'm just letting you know how I work and, and what my um, process is. So do you see what I did? I made it all about me. I mean, I shared my observations and my recollections of what went on, but there was no judgment. There was no, you know, saying what they're doing is wrong. I was expressing myself. I didn't get into my trauma history. I didn't get into all that because we don't have that level of connection. So I was appropriately boundaried and matching their lack of vulnerability, but I was giving a little bit of information to go, this is who I am and this is how I do it. And, you know, I guess I might have added at the end something like, so, you know, if, if this level of sharing and response time for me doesn't work for you, um, you know, there are other options of, you know, responding, you know, quickly and more in depth than, um, you know, when you say you're going to. But by no means do you have to. That's up to you. Like, I'm fine with what you're doing. Um, I'm just doing what works best for me.